So I'm going to show you a film now. I'm probably going to dance around it because I get incredibly excited by it. Um, so this is what I actually see down the microscope. You can turn the lights off if you like so you don't see the dance. Right, OK. This is a process. sodium hydroxide um, in, the, um, uh, in the oil space. And what's happening is that the protocell is acting like a chemical computer. It's able to sense its environment. It's able to modify it. It's able to undergo complex um, reactions, such as shedding skins. And it can actually build um, quite complex structures. And some of them actually have quite um, a, a lot of biological um, homologies. I mean, there's similarities. And between biological processes. They can fuse, they can divide, they can create spiral shapes. Um, so they're, they're, they're very spatial um, and they're um, able to uh, literally um, create um, uh, physical calculations you know, that are contingent on the environmental conditions in which they find themselves. All these protocells are in the same medium under the same conditions, but the variety of morphologies that occur, even within a single um, protocell itself, um, are, are, are amazing. And it, and it reminds me of um, um, uh, Donald Williamson's theory about how he describes the um, Cambrian explosion. He has it through the fossil record, and um, it's in um, uh, one of um, Brockman's collections for the, for the Edge. And what he says is that um, the Cambrian explosion is um, caused by the act active mixing and matching of um, uh, larval and adult body types. Um, and you kind of think, well, that's, that's, that's silly because there must be genetics. But maybe at the, in the Precambrian stage, that genetics is not deterministic in the same way as it is today. And if you look at these agents, in some ways, we're, we're modeling this. Because this creature started off as a cell-like thing, now it's kind of looking like a worm. And at some stage, it goes through a jellyfish um, stage of transition. Not only that, it is very social. You'll now start. To, oh, <laughs> have you not heard anything I said? <laughs> um, so, so they're incredibly social. They love each other. Look at this. They, they all kind of snuggle up to each other. And there's actually, I don't know how to describe it very scientifically, but there's some kind of dialogue going on that's, that's at a chemical level between the oil water interface. And, and not like, you know, sometimes the, 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 the big one will eat the little one. Um, sometimes they just, you know, like to hang out for a bit, and sometimes they kind of get bored of each other and wander off. Actually, that's less um, common than for them to hang out um, almost as social groups. Just want to stress, these do not have any DNA. All this complex... Oh, no, I, uh, sorry, just, just, just stop that for a second. This is my favourite movie in the whole world. What we've got is, is one group of protocells here, all hanging out, having a good time, producing a little bit of skin. Here, we've got a second group... The, the, the away team, okay? And so they're coming out to check the, 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 the home crowd here. Watch what happens next. I don't think we can actually explain this in um, very simple chemical physical terms. <laughs> there is no DNA. That, 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 that is a chemical um, solution provided by complex chemistry that is not predictable through simple computer modeling. I mean, the, the research groups that I work have got um, um, uh, computer simulations of some of these protocells, but we weren't able to anticipate that. That's not, that's not a one-off either. I've, I've got numbers of those. I just, let's just get excited by that bit. So essentially, no DNA, and what you're getting is a lack of determinism in uh, morphology, and yet a great deal of sensitivity to minuscule variations that's going on in that oil field. I mean, seriously, this is all within the, 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 the space of about five centimetres. Um, and, and so all these um, uh, variations in uh, performance um, and morphology are, are created um, through environmental um, uh, changes. And, and that's, so, so I think that's, that's, that's the key point, because that's what I'm going to talk about next. This is my second favourite part um, of, 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 or a movie of all time. Um, what I, I, I did briefly say that there are some kind of homologies between um, uh, protocells and biological systems. These are protocell roses. Um, I have no idea how that happened, um, but I was just lucky enough to, 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 to catch it whilst it did. 
Um, and, and so, so the, the idea is then that, you know, there's this whole set of terminologies that's emerging around these um, you know, uh, living technologies. Artificial biology is something else that's being applied to bottom-up synthetic biology because of its lack of... In, because it's not that it's not engaged with DNA, because we've got um, groups like Showstacks that are um, taking the idea of a minimal cell, starting with this oil and water droplet system, and then trying to introduce this, this model system which relies on the creation of a membrane or a container, um, the creation of um, uh, information, which is RNA or, or, or DNA, um, and a metabolism of, of some description. Many of them are um, based in, in, in the membranes around these cells. And, and what's neat about protocells is they're all turned inside out. So rather than all the organelles kind of being sitting on the inside, you know, staying away from the water, uh, uh, water um, phase, uh, protocells like, have their metabolisms on the outside. They kind of wear their metabolism. So when you give them artificial re receptors, it's all happening at the interface. And so kind of the notion of interface um, is, is, is really key to this um, uh, kind of idea of um, uh, bottom-up synthetic biology or, or um, artificial biology. And so what was kind of striking about the systems I've been working with is that we, we actually have a, a way of sensing and engaging with environmental changes. And so if you remember back to the, the Darwin's theory of, um, you know, uh, um, on, on the origins of um, the species, you know, and, and the notion of natural selection, there are two components to evolution. And you know, since the 50s, say, we've really focused on directing evolution through the body. And I think, you know, kind of politically as well as culturally, we're at a time where, you know, we need to kind of get re-engaged with technologies of the environment as well. And um, the way that I'm thinking about the, the, the living technology or these kind of bottom-up synthetic biologies um, is to use them to influence microenvironments by thinking of them a little bit like um, environmental pharmaceuticals. You know, we used to the idea of restoring balances within bodies by introducing you know, some of the drugs that were being talked about earlier. Um, and, and, and that allows a kind of a reharmonizing or a, a kind of a buying of time whilst complex systems and complex processes essentially re-establish connections you know, under these um, you know, new um, set of you know, in environmental um, conditions. And, and so, th so we're thinking about you know, these, these, these protocells as being almost like little slow-release containers um, that in the next 10 years these protocells are thought to be able to reproduce themselves. We can chemically um, fuse them and we can chemically um, cause them to divide, so we can induce cell cycles. Um, and we've got you know, uh, protocell groups around the world that are trying to introduce RNA and, and DNA. But I mean, for me, that's kind of, uh, it, it, it feels wrong. It feels like trying to bring a Cartesian um, notion of order back into something that's um, inherently complex. So I'm, I'm, I, would be, I would be much more interested in finding out what these systems want as a form of chemical um, organizational um, matrix or you know, information-based system. I, I don't really want to throw DNA in there and, and, and expect it to work. Um, so uh, the, the, the bottom-up approach appeals to me. So, so what is the information system? Well, essentially because it's got no DNA, it could be any chemistry. And so what we've been doing is we've been putting um, essentially very simple inorganic chemistry inside these um, little balls of fat and asking them to do very simple calculations. So these ones can produce carbonate um, from um, dissolved carbon dioxide in water. And so we can make little fatty looking protopoles. Now, but but the, the thing about this is, this is okay, it's very early. It's, it's a very early stage of development. Um, we're talking to people about developing paints based on this system. But, but what I find interesting about this as a principle is that here we have a technology that can produce a material that has biological-like properties. 